Hello everyone, my name is The Fox, and today I have some pretty good news about the Steam Deck. That news is 8 CU, or 8 compute units, the cores of RDNA 2 at a clock of 1.6 GHz should take around 10 watts of power. Let's break this down and explain what this means. Because the chip on the Steam Deck is AMD Van Gogh, and we have the ability to see how much power is required by the Zen 2 CPUs by looking at Renoir and examining how much power is being consumed in a similar scope, the missing piece of the puzzle has always been how much power does RDNA 2 take? It could be possible to take a look at RDNA 2 GPUs themselves and manipulate clocks and look at resultant power consumed. And one enterprising individual known as Uzi38 on the Anatech forums did just that. Before we get onto the meat of the video, let's discuss how this video is broken up. Number one, what does TDP even mean? Two, Uzi 38's RDNA 2 data and what it means. Three, will we even be able to hit 1.6 gigahertz RDNA 2 on Steam Deck all the time? Four, what is the actual max TDP of Van Gogh really? Five, what games even need max TDP? All right, so first things first, what does TDP even mean? Let's break it down into a few parts. TDP means thermal design power in watts and refers to power consumption under the maximum theoretical load. Okay, so on the Steam Deck, Valve specifies that the max TDP is 15 watts. Van Gogh can use almost double this amount if we were to max out all clocks. We'll get to that in a moment. There is a lot of confusion about this term. In my opinion, you can largely ignore the thermal argument of TDP for the very simple reason that if you were to look at this chart of Cezanne, you can see it lists eight CPU cores. You don't need a multi-threaded aware application to use all eight cores. Modern operating systems and scalers on the chip itself distribute loads across cores quite efficiently. Let's say we're running eight cores at two gigahertz. The power used would be somewhere in the area of five watts. When you are using those five watts spread across all eight cores, the power is spread out across the entire area. Each core is taking less power and the wider surface area makes it easier to displace that heat. If instead you pushed a single core to four gigahertz, that would also use the exact same amount of power, but the resultant heat would be localized in a smaller area and be harder to displace. In both of these situations, the TDP is five Watts. However, on the single core at 4 GHz, the resultant temperature will be much, much hotter because the heatsink will not be able to extract this heat away fast enough. Put another way, if you don't cap CPU clocks and just had a TDP limit, using a laptop grade passive heatsink would be possible with a 5 watt TDP on 8 cores, but would hit 100 degrees Celsius and thermal throttle like crazy at 5 watt TDP on a single core. So when talking about TDP, we should always look at it through the lens of watts or power consumption. Now that we are firmly in the land of TDP equals watts used, let's now discuss how this actually unfolds. When talking about TDP of a chip, we are only referring to the power used of the SOC or system on chip. Typically, that is broken down to mean CPU and GPU. However, there are other components on the SOC that also require power. Intel has marketed this term as Encore. So when talking about TDP, it is the limit of power specified by a vendor, in this case Valve, saying Van Gogh can use up to 15 watts. So that means in this example of Cezanne, the CPU, the GPU, and Uncore, that would be the SMU, the Fusion Controller Hub, Infinity Fabric, Sensor Fusion Hub, the Memory Controller, which is separate from the memory itself because RAM power is not included in the system on chip TDP. The memory controller is a system that controls RAM, just like having the NVMe SATA controller here is on the CPU, but the NVMe SATA disk itself needs power separate from the SOC TDP as well. I'll talk more about this in my next video talking about battery and power on the Steam Deck. This video is talking exclusively about the power needed by the Van Gogh chip itself. Again, Van Gogh TDP at a 15 watt limit includes CPU, GPU, Encore. It does not include power needed for the LCD, the LPDDR5 RAM, the NVMe storage or EMMC storage, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the speakers, 
Any peripherals that are plugged in via USB will be taking power. Power for the controllers on the deck itself, including the touchpads, i.e. a chip that is the interface between the system and the controllers, and the fan for the heatsink. All of those components take power outside of just the TDP of the chip itself. And again, I'll have a video talking about this next, but for now, let's talk about the big news, which is 1.6 gigahertz of RDNA 2 at 10 watts. So it was brought to my attention that Uzi38 on the Anantech forums had done a very comprehensive dive into RDNA 2 GPUs and broke them down in a lot of areas. There are two big areas that I want to talk about. First, I just like to talk about the point graph. This is just excellent data. Looking at this graph alone, we can see how clocks scale against power for cores only. If we focus in, we can see that at around 1.6 GHz, the amount of power consumed is almost linear with clocks achieved. What this means is that 1.6 GHz is very efficient on RDNA 2. Looking at this graph, anything above 1.6 GHz starts requiring more and more power to achieve. On a mobile platform, 1.6 GHz is a good top end frequency to list because after this point is the point of diminishing returns i.e. the amount we're spending is not yielding the same return as they were at lower clocks. And we can clearly see that Van Gogh's top-end GPU frequency is 1.6 GHz. Perfect. This has other implications for AMD Rembrandt looking at this chart. I don't think Rembrandt personally would exceed 2 GHz as the power required starts really getting out of hand very quickly. Small digression, but really cool data. Now, for the meat and potatoes. How much power does 8CU at 1.6 GHz require? Well, Uzi38 already lists that data real handy for us in this column. We can see that power per CU based off of core power only, which is perfect because that's what our GPU spend in TDP on the SOC will be. So we just line it up. 1.6 GHz will require 1.225 watts per CU at 1.6 GHz. So 1.225 watts times 8 CU equals 9.8 watts, or roughly 10 watts of power. Awesome, right? We now have this number. So now, how much power does the Zen 2 cores and Encore require? Let's get on to part 3. Since I have a Zen 2 mobile machine to test against, I have the AMD 4800U, which is 8 core and 16 threads of Zen 2 on TSMC's 7 nanometer node. This is double the amount of cores on Van Gogh, so what do we do here? What I've done is disabled four of the cores. In effect, making my 4800U four cores, eight threads, much like Van Gogh is. When replicating four core, eight thread on 4800U running a DirectX 11 application, we can see that almost all of the power is dedicated towards the GPU. And in fact, the Zen 2 CPUs are rapidly scaling up and down in frequency. This bursting of CPU from 1.4 GHz to 4.3 GHz spread across the four cores ranges in wattage from 2 to 4 watts. The reason this is so low is because the CPU frequency is rapidly bursting and not sustaining the high clocks. More often than not, the cores are riding at 1.4 GHz. This is pretty much what you should expect from most all native PC games on the Steam Deck, not emulation. We'll talk about that in a moment. So this is the important part, right? If CPU and Encore take roughly 5 to 6 watts of power, that means more often than not, even with Proton overhead, we should be able to sustain 1.6 GHz on the RDNA 2 cores on the Steam Deck quite often. Now, there will 100% be newer games that will require higher sustained CPU clock speeds. For those games, we will not have enough total power at the 15 watt TDP limit to feed everything as best as possible. But as a general statement, I'd say that the core takeaway here is that more often than not, we should have full GPU power within 15 watts now that we know this information. The next segment is, well, what is the actual max TDP of the Steam Deck? 15 watt is not the max amount of power that the Steam Deck requires. We know this because the GPU portion needs at least 10 watts by itself. So then, how much power do we need for full CPU clocks as well as with Encore? There are exceedingly few situations where we'll be drilling the CPU and needing a good amount of GPU at the same time. In fact, the only application that I can think of that will need all that power will be RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. 
RPCS3 is an excellent multi-threaded application, and because emulation requires CPU first to operate, we will be drilling those CPUs and needing GPU as well. Before we get into that part, how much power does 4-core 8-thread Zen 2 need to hit 3.5 GHz in a synthetic way? If we use something like Cinebench, we can really max out those CPU cores. And when we do, we need 20 watts of power for CPU and Encore to sustain 3.5 GHz. So the actual factual max TDP of the Steam Deck is actually closer to 30 watts. In no situation do we actually ever need all this power, except literally for RPCS3. In this quick video, you can clearly see that RPCS3 will happily devour every last bit of power from the CPU. And as a result, because emulation is CPU first, we have two watts for GPU to use and render. Please note that RDNA 2 at 2 watt will crush Vega at 2 watt. So we should get considerably better results here. But also see that TDP is set to 20 watt. I am routinely hitting 4.3 GHz on CPU. The main takeaway here is something like RPCS3, it will very realistically require 14 to 15 watts to hit 3.5 GHz on the Steam Deck, which leaves exceedingly little for the RDNA 2 GPU to work. It should be noted that the Vengo APU will automatically adjust CPU clocks so that the GPU can still operate. We just won't be hitting those 3.5 gigahertz at all on CPU, despite the fact that RPCS3 loves it. Having said that, I still anticipate reasonably good performance on a number of PS3 titles, but some of the heavier hitting games like God of War 3 and The Last of Us most likely will be starved at the 15 watt TDP cap. If when we get the ability to raise that cap, we should start to see some better performance in those games. Now, the only caveat here is we don't yet know if when we do have the ability to raise TDP on the Steam Deck, will the heat sink on the Steam Deck actually support that higher wattage that we have no clue of just yet. This is the end of the video, but let's do a brief recap. 8 CU of RDNA 2 at 1.6 GHz requires roughly 10 watts of power. 4 core 8 thread of Zen 2 plus Encore with native PC games requires around 5 to 6 watts of power. 15 to 16 watt TDP is the ideal amount of power to extract the most efficient amount of performance out of the Steam Deck. The actual max theoretical TDP of Van Gogh is actually closer to 30 watts, but this is kind of for synthetic benchmark purposes only. Exceedingly few games, or emulators, will require more than 15 watt TDP. Even RPCS3, which is a fantastic multi-threaded application, would see most of their benefits at 25 watt TDP. I don't even think a 30 watt TDP would actually really be needed for RPCS3. Again, the good news here is that for 95% of most gaming applications, a 15 watt TDP will be enough power to max out all the performance from the Steam Deck. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.